Yo guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel today. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, a little bit fun. It's kind of an experiment. If you're into the FIFA YouTuber community, you might know somebody by the name of Jared HD. He does a lot of these experiments um, where he puts teams, like he puts teams together and puts them into a Premier League or see how they would do going into the Champions League. So today we did a team of uh, the best CONCACAF players, which would be North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. So we got a lot of Mexican players, a few uh, American players, some Canadians, uh, an Honduran. We're going by ratings, uh, Costa Ricans. I'm going to show you guys the team that we have here. In goal, we have Keylor Navas. Everybody knows Keylor Navas. Uh, Miguel Layun in the left back position because we're going by rating and we don't really have a high rated left back in the CONCACAF. Um, and Layun used to play left back now in in Villarreal he's playing right back and then the two defenders um, John Brooks and Gonzalez from a man who plays in Italy um, in the right back position we got Timmy Chandler from the United States um, Hector Herrera in the midfield with Atiba Hutchinson our captain I put him as a captain just because of his age and then Andres Guardado next to Hutchinson and then the front three is pr it's a pretty good front three pretty young with two wingers who is uh, El Chucky Lozano, uh, the young Mexican, and then Leon Bailey, um, the Jamaican, who hasn't been capped for Jamaica yet, and I think he can be capped for England, so we're just hoping that um, the amount of players that can go to England, play for England from Jamaica is pretty, pretty high. One of them would be Raheem Sterling, and then moving on to the bench, we have uh, Raul Jimenez, and Kyle Lauren, the Canadian, Jesus Corona, Pulisic, Gutierrez, Reyes, and Ochoa. I'm probably going to change some of these players and put in another player from another country because there's way too many Mexicans in this. Since we did go by rating, Mexicans had the higher rating here. And then um, our backup right back would be DeAndre Yedlin, um, Josie Altador, our other striker. Carlos Salcedo would be one of our other center backs. Chichar Hernandez. Um, Chicharro Hernandez could go in for Raul Jimenez here. Um, Javier Aquino, Andre Blake as our third string keeper. Campbell to bring in another Costa Rican player, Celso Borges, um, to add also to the amount of Costa Rican players. Marquitos Fabian, Marco Fabian, Fabian Johnson, and Albert Ellis, who is our only Honduran who made the team. There was players that could have gone above him, but most of those were Mexican players, so I decided to bring him in. Um, to add to have more teams from the CONCACAF instead of the same four which are Mexico, USA, um, Canada, and Costa Rica. So now we have five teams um, including Jamaica and Honduras. So we're going to go into the Premier League. We did switch out Vissel Kobe. I did Vissel Kobe because I really like their uniform and their badge and uh, kind of a tribute. To the super team kind of that they're bidding, building out there with Fernando Torres, David Villa, and Andres Iniesta. So we're going out into the Premier League and we're going to sim all the way to the January transfer market to see how we do in the first half of the season. We're not going to do any any of this stuff here. So we're going to go into the January transfer market and see how we do. So boys, we are... Um, halfway through the season, but um, unfortunately, we are going to be playing the FA Cup. We're in the third round, which is pretty good. So we're going to skip through this so we can see how we are in the league. We have two uh, cup matches here. We're going to skip both of those. See how we are in the league because our next game would be against Huddersfield, I believe. That's the team that we come up this coming Saturday, the 12th of January, as you can see. So we came up with a loss and a draw in our two games in the FA Cup. But in the league, we are in ninth place with 30 points and 21 games played, which is not too bad. We're going to see if we have any players at a uh, top score or if our players have done any good. So we have Jesus El Tecatito Corona, who has come in in 12th place for top score, 7 goals in 19 games. Um, we don't have any more players, I believe, here. And going into the assist, um, we we have two players, Leon Bailey with four, and Corona again with three. It looks like Corona's putting in a lot of work for us. Um, it's looking very important for us. And then going into the clean sheets, it doesn't look like we have many clean sheets. We have uh, two clean sheets from Navas. 
um, which is I guess not very bad uh, but not what we would like obviously but we have kept the goal at the the score at zero at points um, we have a few messages we'll check those I think we have some players whose contract would be expiring we have yes five players we'll try to keep those players obviously because those are players that we want to have on our squad um, one of them would be Andre Blake we need all these players to stay so guys we did manage to give everybody who had a chance to renew contracts to renew their contracts um we're not going to be losing any players this summer by the looks of it um, very luckily besides our captain who will be retiring at the age of 35 who is atiba hutchinson we'll be looking at our players see who grew see um who's going down um we'd see that uh bailey went up by one vela went down by one uh, Lozano has stayed the same, Hutchinson went down by one, Guardado stayed the same, so has Herrera, Brooks up by one, Gonzalez is the same, Layun and Chandler Navas are all the same, Chicharo is going down, but Larin is coming up, so, you know, we do have players that are going up in ratings, such as Pulisic and Corona, um, Pulisic and uh, Pulisic, you can swap out for Lozano over here, Corona, because Lozano doesn't seem to be growing, and as we could put Lozano as a striker, which I have never thought of, but would be something pretty good for us. Um, Pulisic Gutierrez is going up. Reyes and Ochoa have stayed the same. Yet Lean could actually go in for Chandler, who is much younger than him and much quicker. We have Carlos Salcedo, who's going up. Out the door stayed the same. Jimenez stayed the same. Borges stayed the same. Campbell went up by one. Andre Blake and Aquino have stayed the same. Marquitos Fabian and uh, has stayed the same actually. Fabian Johnson went down by one. He was a 77. He is now a 76. And Arbet Ellis went up by one from a 75 to a 76. We'll be seeing who we can have come in from these players. I'd rather have uh, Carlos Salcedo, who's going up, in over Diego Reyes, whose rating really hasn't moved at all. And I believe he is younger. He's one year younger, actually. Um, we're going to be simming to the end of the season, see how we end this season. Uh, you guys saw that we were we were not too bad right now in uh, ninth place, 30 points. Um, so we're going to be simming into the end of the transfer market. Hopefully we don't lose any players by buyout clauses because I am not sure if there's buyout clauses um, for this team, like a team that we like pretty much didn't make. As we've seen to the end of the month, to the end of the transfer window, we have 10 hours left. We do seem like we have some offers for, for some of our players um, in Aquino. Uh, we're going to reject all of these and John Brooks. Um, most of these players aren't playing for us currently. I assume they would want to go, but we know it's for the depth of the squad because when you're simming, you're going to be losing a lot of players. So we want to keep these players in. Um, Diego Reyes wants to talk about his role. Carlos Acedo feels he's pretty good. So, you know, these guys that are that are staying consistent, players that are um, going to be seeing how they do for us at the end of this season. And then at the end of the month, we have gone down by two positions. Um, from ninth, who is Chelsea, to 11th. Um, in first place, we have Liverpool with Manchester City in fifth, which is kind of odd. Uh, Wolves in second place with 47 points tied with um, with Liverpool. You know, some weird teams are at the top. Um, kind of like in real life, Fulham is bottom of the table and Manchester United 10th. Chelsea 9th, Arsenal 8th, so it's kind of a weird sim, but we're going to go ahead and go with it, going to the end of this season in May after our last game versus United. As we've simmed to the end of the season, um, we did get a draw in our last match of the season, we're going to be seeing how we did. Uh, we came up to 7th place actually, which is not too bad, uh, behind O, oh, which was a very, t very split up race between uh, first and second place which is Liverpool with 81 points uh, Spurs 66 and Chelsea 64 Wolves finished in the top four and it looked like we finished above City who's in ninth place surprisingly I am not sure how that's how that's even possible um, 
the champion obviously was Liverpool and teams that are going to get relegated for this season are Brighton, Fulham and Watford. Seems like Newcastle has found their way out of that one because they were in the bottom three halfway through the season. So at the end of the season, we're going to be checking about who, about any differences between our players. So Lozano went up by one, Leon Bailey went up two from the beginning of the career. Um, of this video, Corona also went up by two. So you know we have a strong, strong attack up top. I would say Pacey, but Corona surprisingly only has 79 pace, but he does have the five star, five star. And then Hutchinson went down from a 78 all the way down to a 76. He will be retiring at the age of 36 this summer. Um, our midfielder beside Hutchinson stayed the same. Brooks has stayed the same from the from halfway through the season. Pulisic also hasn't grown. Uh, Jimenez went up by one, so I will sit him out over Chicharro, who didn't, who went down actually. Gutierrez is injured. Um, two of these players have come back from loan from the Rio. Uh, Vissel Kobe, so we will be dropping those guys from our squad actually. But if we could sell them, we will be, we will try to sell these guys. Maybe get a little bit of cash out of them because I mean they were already here. We couldn't do anything about it, so maybe we sell those guys. So now that you guys saw that, you know, they didn't do too bad um, it's into seventh place in their first season in the Prem. Uh, we're going to be seeing um, how they can be doing next season. Maybe we could get ourselves into Champions League spots or Europa League spots. Um, we see that Leon Bailey, he's finishing sixth place for the amount of goals with 14 goals. And Saito Mane with 21, just seven more goals um, between him and uh, and third place so we tied to third place there's a lot of players with uh, 14 goals there and I think the the smart choice would be to have um, Gutierrez, Gutierrez to be here in this um, center mid spot now that Hutchinson is retiring with that 79 rating we're gonna have a full Mexican midfield here um, we don't have players from other countries unless we put in Celso Borges um, but 77 rating isn't is the best. So boys, we've come to the end of the season with the 64 rating. Um, did better than expected, honestly. We're gonna see if the club uh, would want us. It says we are looking for stronger results, and they want us to stay. Um, thankfully, so we will be coming into the second second season. And we surprisingly we didn't receive any international management offers, which I was hoping we probably got from any team in. Uh, in the CONCACAF region, um, usually I get them from Mexico because that is the rating, the the nationality I put, pick for my for my manager. So hopefully in this next coming season, maybe we could get one too. Um, see what players we could bring into our squad from the players over there. So boys, we're here to start off the second season with uh, Viso Kobe with our CONCACAF players. Um, the team is obviously the same. We'll be seeing how we do up till the up to the to the transfer window we don't have to go any play get any players but one of our players did retire which is a captain and we'll be we we handed that captain also Andres Guardado who did lose the rating by one his rating went down to uh 80 from I think it was an 81 um we're looking into our squad we do have quite a bit of depth depth um we'll be releasing these two players these Japanese players um who were on the squad on loan who were on loan from the squad um, when we got here so we'll be letting those guys go um because you know they, those guys won't be having any playing time so we're gonna let them go um players that did ask for a loan who i think would be smart to let them go before like something and before they leave the squad permanently so these players that won't be playing too much like aquino or marco fabian Maybe even Fabian Johnson. So we're just gonna like put put these guys up for for loan. Um, Ochoa. We at least need to have one extra keeper, so we're gonna add Ochoa to the loan loan list. I would rather keep Blake than Ochoa at the moment because of the ratings, which is the same, but Blake is younger. So you know you want to keep the younger player, obviously, if they're the same rating. We're gonna decline the invitation for 
the preseason tournament and then we're going to go ahead and zoom straight to the end of the transfer window so and then from there we're going to go to january see how the team does for us in the second season in the bpl oh it looks like we did manage to get into the europa league i didn't notice that so we do have our first europa league match over here against uh north hoping i have no idea how to say that honestly so we're going to be going into our first match of the of European football see how we do there maybe we could I don't know like win that and then if we don't finish in the top four that could get us into the Champions League hopefully that goes well for us um, knowing that we probably won't finish in the top four this coming season but you never know you saw that City ended in ninth so hopefully we have the luck that City did not have so boys we made it to the end of the transfer window in the summer um, we did win both of our champ of our Europa League matches. I believe those might be qualifying um, matches. Um, we're gonna be seeing how we're doing in the first few matches. We are in first place, which is pretty surprising. It's pretty good, honestly. We got a four. Um, we got six goals, four and two again. So that makes about a four difference, whatever it is. We're tied in first for Chelsea, but we obviously go ahead because of the amount of goals we've scored. Um, because we have the same goal difference, we have received more than nine messages. We're gonna see how we what that's all about. Um, we have a lot of players leaving on international duty. Um, obviously from Concacaf, we have the Americans and the Mexicans. A lot of match reschedules. We have a couple players injured, like Dora Herrera for seven days, and Diego Reyes for nine days, which is not too bad for the short periods. And then also Carlos Ancelo for nine days. We have received offers, but they were retracted because I mean, I took too long to answer these guys. Um, but, you know, we're doing pretty good for the first three games. Um, we did win our Europa League matches. We did receive an offer for Ogawa, our uh, Japanese, one of our Japanese players that came back from loan. We're going to accept those offers for any of those players that, you know, won't be having any minutes with us. Um, we are... We have two hours left in this transfer window. And we didn't receive many, many high offers for these players. So we do have a larger budget than what we originally started off with. We started with about 10, and that's with a 30% budget increase all the way up to a 50, 50 million dollar transfer budget. Um, so that means that in the future we're going to be bringing in big, um, big name players that will be going in rating um, that are young now. So from now we are in second place without having played our match. We're going to be going to the January transfer window. See how we do. We did get um, sorted into a pretty, I guess, a pretty manageable group in the Europa League with Red Bull Salzburg big and being our biggest, biggest enemy there, our biggest threat. And then Braga from Portugal, and then this team, I don't know where they're from, I feel like they're from Norway or one of those countries. So we're going to be going all the way to January, um, the 2nd of January, having played the first half of the season. But we made it through the first half of the season in the 2019-2020 season. Um, we do look like um, we are doing pretty good, honestly. Um, going from the beginning of the season, we started off pretty well. And we did have a draw against Manchester City, lost, you know, we had a pre some pretty okay results. And I think we are moving on to the next round in the Europa League as we are playing Montpellier in February. We have two matches then. We do have a lot of messages to take. Um, again, he wants to go. We will let Ochoa go for a loan. We're going into our squad. Bailey is up to an 85 so quickly. And then Lozano in 83, Corona in 83, I think well, Pulisic is, is injured. We're going to bring in maybe Campbell in that other right wing position, Campbell. We have Gonzalez, 79, we're going to bring here. Um, Celso Borges, you know a lot of players that are going down in ratings here. A lot of the older players reaching their 30s, like Aquino, who's 29, I believe. He's 29, so you know he's going down in rating. Timmy Chandler, Yedlin is going up. All these young players are going up. Oh. 
we're gonna the problem is hopefully those players because we, we did have a lot of players who are going up and rating like the mexican left backs but right now they're still at like 69 so hopefully they're up and rating right now so that in the future we can go for those guys and we hopefully we get an offer from the mexican national team so we don't have to scout those players which honestly takes forever so we're gonna skip to this past the stoke city match to see how we're doing here in the in the league guys here before we come up against stoke city we are in fourth place with 19 matches played um ahead of the previous champion liverpool who are right behind us on our tail with also 32 points um manchester city is like you know they're not doing good at all last season i think they finished in they finished below us i think there was an 11th um leads did get the promotion last season so did west brom um other players the other teams that got the promotion i am not sure i cannot notice what team it was mm, i think it might have been, no burnley was already in the league i think it might have been stoke the team that that came up stoke in eighth place and we're in fourth so we're gonna go into this match against stoke um sim to, sim to the end of the the transfer window and then forward we actually like leon bailey from an 812 it's an 85 already and um so you know we're doing pretty good we will be seeing how the squad does here we're gonna take out leon bailey because he's injured give time for other players like um let's see maybe lotting to play or police is still injured sadly so we're gonna put in campbell i don't think who has played at all and then Lozano, I mi mixed that up. I did more than I should have there. Campbell can play our striker there. We don't have the, the like the real striker, like a really good striker. Hopefully, with the players coming up in ratings in the coming season, we can pick someone up who's a, you know pretty decent. We're gonna send to this before the Leicester match, so we are sure to bring uh, Bailey back in, because then that'll be pretty bad if we go a half season without our best player. So guys, we do have a red card for our left back, but I've been thinking maybe we can do a little bit of a something different here, where we can have more wingers in our squad. Um, something maybe like this is not realistic, like it's not really a realistic formation, but having these players in like Pulisic or um, Ellis in instead of having them on the bench would be better than not playing them at all. And we take out Herrera, we put in Lozano at the striker position, we bring in somebody like Larin, who is a real striker, put in Lozano on the side, Bailey and Pulisic, we'll switch those guys there, I know um, which one can play, this one can play right wing and left wing, so you know, this would be a pretty, you know, it's a pretty good squad here, 93, you know, players who can keep up with their pace here, um, see how we do actually with Gutierrez or the red on our captain bringing in Layun to the bench Bringing in players maybe like Campbell back on here We'll see what well, since I changed the formation brought in better players Hopefully we don't get um, I guess punished for having only three at the back um, We did get a loan offer for Altador and a transfer for Chicharro and one for Bailey We're gonna reject Bailey's offer. He's our star player. We do not want to let him go Altidore's offer, I'm thinking whether I should, I teach that is a real like transfer offer, we don't want to do that, so I think we will be letting Altidore go for one year, he will be back, um, Ogawa was sold, um, so you know, these players who will be, not be playing, I will let him go out, so now we'll be sitting to the end of the January transfer window, see how our squad is doing by then, make sure we don't lose any players, or if we have any offers for, for loans, we will be accepting those, and then from there we're going to be going to the end of the season, see how we do, hopefully it goes well, and um, we go up in position, because right now we were in fourth, we want to stay in that Champions League spot, if it doesn't go too well for us in the Europa League, we will have the backup for the Champions League there boys we are in third place which is pretty good after simming the end of january transfer market um 22 matches played and 39 points with everton and united um respectively two and four points away from us and then three points away from second place arsenal 
and six points away from uh, first place Spurs. So we are our team is responding pretty well to to these changes that we've made. Um, we have received some offers for Chandler. We're gonna reject that. We don't want to let any players go. Um, we have received offers, but that were retracted. Um, Miguel Ayun is over. Hector did go on loan. We did receive more money, a two hundred four thousand dollar. Little bit of a raise there. So looks like there's been a change here in the formations, which I do not appreciate at all. I hate when this happens. This has been happening a lot lately. Um, putting Corona there, Pulisic, Mbai, Corona. This has been very annoying recently. Has been happening to a lot of people I've seen too. It's a little glitch that happens during career mode, even during the real match. Like when you're trying to change formations, that when you sim is what happens. So we're gonna sim through the end of this transfer window, and then hopefully our team doesn't change formations. Make sure it doesn't change formations, and then we're gonna sim to the end of the year. Hopefully the team does well. So our captain now is out for two months. I thought that out looked like he broke something. He's out for two months. Um, again, Andre Blake wants to leave the team. Not gonna let him go. He's held hostage. I think we will have to put in Carlitos Vela here over the injured Herrera. We're gonna bring in um, Celso Borges here, another midfielder. But Herrera, Joao Gutierrez. I mean, our players are going pretty well. Um, I think the problem will be once Navas retires, who will be our keeper because Andre Blake is already reaching 30 years old and he hasn't grown at all. And then um, we would again have to go into the market for those players there. Um, hopefully we do good in these in these coming up matches so that our team does, you know, get into the Champions League spots. So we'll be simming, see how the team does. In the end of the 2020 season, our last game will be the 24th of May against Southampton. Let's see how it goes for us, boys. So, boys, we've seen to the end of the season. Um, we oh, it looks it says we won a cup. I guess we won a domestic cup. Um, players injured. We did receive some 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 offers to coach national teams from Venezuela. So we see we see how we did at the end of the season. Like so we finished maybe in the top four. We finished in third place. Oh, it was a very tight season this year. Liverpool comes up with it again. First place. Manchester City did better than last season. Two spots above last season. You know the big teams aren't really showing up this season, which is Leicester. I mean Man City and Man United. But um Chelsea right behind us there in fourth place behind three points. See the rating of our squad. Um, we do have Leon Bailey to up to an 86, Lozano up to an 84, Corona and Pulisic at 83, Gutierrez up to an 82, Reyes is up to an 80, and Kyle Larin is up to a 79. So it looks like we found ourselves our striker boys with only a 79 rating, but you know it looks like he did pretty well for us there. Um, Ellis went up to 78. Four star, four star there. Herrera's back from his injury, so he's gonna be up there. He looks like he's been back for a couple months, but you know we couldn't put him in the squad. Johnson went all the way down to a 74 rating, so our squad is looking pretty strong compared to what it was at the beginning. You know a lot of players did go down, but the young players are coming up and they are they are growing a lot more than like usual. So we're gonna end the season here, boys. At the end of the 2020 season coming into third place they do want us to have a next coming next year hopefully we go up two positions because from we went from ninth all the way to third this year maybe we could battle liverpool for the first place this season with our great players that have come up for us boys we're into the third season you know, very exciting for the season. The team's looking very good. Um, we do have Bailey up to 86, which is, you know, he's going very, very quick for us. Um, Lozano on 84, and as you can see, everybody else here. You know, our team is looking very, very strong. Um, the problem is that I'm getting scared that Nawaz is going down in rating. He's going up in age as well. 
so there's gonna be a problem there for a while is we could find a good replacement for him i was thinking the man that we could bring in is zach stefan the man currently linked to manchester city and it looks like we did get a very very generous transfer budget upgrade from 136 35 million you know that's pretty crazy the amount of wage budgets for the players that we're going to renew contracts would be 2 million which is insane so we're going to have a lot of money to play around with a lot more from in the beginning we're going to start by uh, scouting a few players that we could bring in the first one would be zach stefan obviously the man linked to man city oh I cannot spell Zach, I guess. I guess he's spotted some different way, so we're just gonna look for Stefan. Um the goalkeeper. Let me see if we can find him, Zach Stefan. I guess I guess I did something wrong because that's how I spelled it. Um hopefully his rating is high, at least at least seventy nine to eighty, because I know at the beginning of FIFA he's a seventy nine. We're gonna go look for Roberto Alvarado. Um, the the young Mexican, obviously probably not so young anymore. Like he's like in his early 20s still though. Oh, he's only 21. It's only been two seasons, so we're gonna keep look up for him. And then obviously the Mexican little jewel, small Mexican jewel, Diego Lainez, with 20 years of age. He is in. Uh, he's already in Europe with BSC young boy up to Rodolfo Pizarro from Monterrey. Um, who also is a player who grows a lot in rating, 26 years old, Rodolfo Pizarro. So guys, the player that we were looking for is Victor Guzman, I had just forgot his name. The Pachuca man, he is no longer Pachuca in the game, so we'll see where he's at. Um, be a player that we can bring in. Um, um, so he arrived at West Brom last year. So, you know, we probably not going to bring him in right now, but we want to have like a knowing of what his rating is so we're gonna skip to the end of this month of the 3rd of july going into next month where we have our first matches of the season hopefully we do very good in the champions league this year because it's our first champions league involved the year last year we were in the in the europa league i don't think we went very far honestly i think we went into the first round and then after the first round of the knockout a knockout stage we were taking out um because after montpellier i don't remember having skipped any other matches so i guess montpellier took us out of that one we received some offers here for giancarlo gonzalez we're gonna reject that obviously bailey was coming in for i mean arsenal was coming in for bailey chicharo is the at by southampton we're gonna reject that as well um so we have some offers in f we have our oh interest from Cruzas from Nuremberg for Roberto Alvarado. Um, Diego Line is waiting in the back. Zach Stefan and Leon Bailey's. Roberto Alvarado did make it all the way to Nuremberg. So I guess we weren't going to get him this season, but we'll get him the next one. Um, Rodolfo Pizarro. You know, I think he's going to be one player that we're going to bring in. 86 pace, 90 stamina, which is really good. Um, Aguirre, his rating up to a 74, only 23 years of age. Zach Stefan, I think we're going to have to bring in Zach Stefan as well. Diego Line is up to a 75 rating with only 20 years old. With 82 sprint speed, I think he's much faster than that. But FIFA obviously does not give him credit either. And many of the Kongaka players, obviously, they don't give him, like, you know, the rating that I think that they really deserve. Mm. They really overlook leagues like the Colombian League and stuff like that in America. Um, the Liga MX is like one of the prime examples of the leagues that they look over because it's the most watched league in the United States. So it's a really good league. Um, so our first player that we're gonna go up for is either Victor Guzman or Rodolfo Pizarro. We can't get them both at the same time because one of only one will be able to play unless we let go of a player which I really don't want to do um because a player that I would have to let go of is Celso Borges our Costa Rican man and we don't have many Costa Ricans I think we would have to give up a Mexican and we do want to bring him in um I think we might go for Rodolfo Pizarro go for Pizarro and then bring in Guzman in the future So yeah, we're gonna go in 
and we're just gonna pay the, the clause because we have the money and he's between 21 and 25 so we'll get the clause for 22 which is pretty good it's a pretty good deal honestly for an 80 rated 20, 26 year old i believe um our first signing in this career mode three seasons in um it is going to be it is rodolfo pizarro from monterrey he's stayed in monterrey since the beginning of the season since the beginning of the of the game since we started this career mode so we're gonna i said we take out herrera who's currently was our captain was supposed to be our captain we're gonna put in pizarro bring guardado down to the bench no oh, our squad is looking very nice and young um with leon bailey up to 86 at 22 years young um losano up to 84 at 25 corona 27 years old 83 rated he hasn't changed much pull is sick 21 years old and 83 rated john brooks our captain 27 years old and 82 rated center back uh, 27 year old Diego reyes and uh 27 year old deandre yedlin with the 33 year old Keylor Navas in goal. So, you know, we have a pretty, pretty strong squad. Um, Gutierrez, the owner of that midfield with the 82 rating. And we do have that good depth here with um, Jimenez to back up Larin, Herrera to back up either Bizarro or Gutierrez, Vela and Campbell, anyone on the wing, at least also anybody on the wing or even the striker and Salcedo that backup center back who could take Yedlin's spot there. Um, I was, like I said, I was going to go look up more players from either Costa Rica, Honduras, um, um, or Jamaica to bring in more players so it's not just like full of American or uh, Mexican players. So after through this, we're going to be looking up those players. We're going to sim to the end of the transfer window here, see how the team's doing. And then from there, we're going to sim all the way to the January transfer. And then I think that would be the end of the team if we do and if we don't make it far into the champions league we seem to the end of the transfer window we do we are going to check our mail as usual we did receive offers again for andre blake who is not going to be going anywhere his rating has gone up um since he's moved to that position of our second goalkeeper from the third um we did receive a lot of offers here Players injured, which is roughly minutes up to eight weeks, which is two months. Thankfully, we do have we still have Teach Haro. Um, we're gonna be looking at our squad again. Hopefully, hopefully these players are going up. Teach Haro coming back into the starting eleven here, into the bench. Obviously, not the starting eleven yet. Um, our team is looking pretty good. Brooks went up, so. Our team is looking strong, we're going to see how we're doing, and then we're going to sim again till January, the same concept as earlier. Hopefully, we do get to the f get pretty far into the Champions League. Um, let's see how we're doing. We are in 8th place with 7 points, we're not doing quite hot here at this season. Our first Champions League match is going to be against Dinamo Kiev, and then we have Galatasaray. And then back to Galatasaray and Dinamo, and then uh, Atletico in December. And then we don't have a match till I think March or February if we do make it past the first round. So we're going to skip till January. We're skipping to January, see how, see how this goes for us. And if we. This would be the end of this. This would be the end of our experiment. We're only doing it for a couple of seasons. If it doesn't go too well, we're just gonna end it because you know there's not much more for the for the team after that. We're into the January transfer window of 2021. We do have a cup match again in January against Leeds. Um, we do have some players that we are going to have to uh, renew their contracts. It's about six players. We're not, uh, we're not on track on a lot of things. Um, Carlos has said that after two months, we do have. One of contract offer for Mexico and Poland. We're gonna accept the Mexico one that we've been waiting years for this. Um, so we got that. We're gonna be looking at the players that we have to renew, and we're gonna go into our Mexico, our Mexico thing to see what are the players that we could bring into the future. 
because of we're gonna have a lot of access to the young players there so guys we were able to renew everybody's contract the players that are risking to lose um so we're gonna be going into our our here into our Mexico lineup, see what players we have, what players that we could bring into the future. Um, a lot of players with a lot of options. See, he's one of the players who I was thinking about, the young left back from Mexico. I'm currently not sure where he's playing, but at the beginning of the season of the game, he plays in Santos Laguna. Um, you know, we have we have some good options here with Orbelín Pineda, only 24 years old. I had forgot about this guy. He's going to be a good option for us. Jorge Cruz, Javier Abella over here. And they could be our backup right back. Acevedo, Victor Guzman. We're going to be looking into the players in the national squad selection. Um, we do have a lot of a lot of good options, honestly. Um, we're going to be searching up here. Uh, Alfonso Gonzalez. He is Alfonsito's 26, Carlitos Vela, Jonathan Dos Santos, Jonathan Gonzalez, I believe, like 21 already. Yes, he's 21 years old. Diego Line is 20. Daniel Alvarez, he's like 22, 23. Oh, he's 26, actually. Eduardo Lopez, probably also like 25, 26. Uh, Michael Perez is like 28, 29, 27. Jurgen Dam, Marco Fabian. We do have a lot of players coming up. Oh, like Alexis Vega, he can be our backup striker with only 23 years old. Uh, Brian Garnica, 24 years old. Eric Aguirre, he's somebody that we looked up. Um, Omar Govea, 24 years old. Gael Sandoval, Ángel Saldívar, Al Pulido, Javier Aquino, Antonio Briseño. I've never thought of him, but he could be somebody we bring in. Elias Hernández. Um, you know, we have a lot of options in the Mexico, in the Mexican side of this. Um, there's not many options I know for the United States or for any other country currently um, but through we sim to the end of the season we're going to be seeing any players that we can uh, go ahead and bring in if we do go on to the second round of the Champions League we will be facing Barcelona here and then we have two matches here for international duty in March We'll be simming to the end of the m end of the year in May, and we'll be stopping halfway through the season to set up our national squad selection. As we're halfway through the second half of the first season, we're going to be doing some changes here, bringing in players that we need for the selection. We're going to change Carlos Alcedo here, Nasara, Jose Almonte. We got a good lineup in the Mexican side. You know, we have a pretty good, pretty good options here. Jesus Corona, Rosario Berlin, Hector Victor, Jesus, you know, we have a pretty good. Chicharro, Chicharro is out. Chicharro fuera or Alexis, they have the same rating. Um, Roberto, Jesus players that we can take out that wouldn't necessarily help us we don't have a better goalkeeper because our goalkeeper would need to be better than 76 and we currently don't have that with the 74 and Carlos Acevedo 24 years old also 74 rated so you know our, the thing with the Mexicans is that there's no goalkeeper coming up um, that can like be like world class. So we're gonna skip those matches. See how we did against Barcelona in the Champions League. Delete all these messages. Coming up stuff around here. And then after this season, I th if we don't win the Champions League, if we don't get to the final, um, it's gonna be the end of episode one. And then we're gonna have to split it up into a second part until we win the Champions League again. And our team is looking very strong, good ratings for everyone. Um, again, we're gonna be bringing in a goalkeeper there, uh, letting go of some players that will be returning from um, loans. And then it's kind of like a rejuvenation of the team. Um, I'll, we did uh, win the first match against Barcelona and lost the second one. So, but on aggregate, we lost three two. So by the looks of it, this is going to be the end of the first episode, guys, um, at the end of this season. And then I will upload part two coming up um, after that. 
and then um hopefully in the second part of this i know this one is very long the second part of this we could win the champions league now that our players have matured the ratings have gone up we have world broadcast players and hopefully we could find um some also some world class for playing so we did have to submit a second national squad poll for the mexican national team here um we're gonna be going through this again see what players could come in we're gonna bring in Tyler on the center back position Herrera's going down in ratings we're gonna put in Pineda um we're gonna bring in Gallardo to the left back because that's what he playing with the Mexican national team this past coming year and with his um which is his team which is Monterrey he's been playing a little bit of everywhere putting Linus up top or Corona on that side as well putting Corona I forgot about Tecatito switch him out over here oh wrong guy so we're bringing this guy right here and then you know our squad is looking very strong we're going to be skipping to the end of the season and like I said this will be the end of episode one after the end of the season we're going to see how the team is doing guys we're going we're in seventh place with 57 points so our team isn't looking very strong hopefully we get into the top four um well we're not gonna get in top four because it's our last match hopefully we get to stay in the squad we're gonna see how it goes if not if um if, when i upload the second the second part if we don't make it into the squad we're gonna see that gonga calf would fell in europe as a as a as a continent or as a group of individuals or whatever it is and we do have a tournament it's confederations cup mexico is paired up with germany france and australia we do have a strong side coming up against these guys but that's the end of episode one guys thanks um thank you guys for watching a part two will be going up since this was so long and so so rigorous um once again thank you for jared hd all credits to him these are his ideas uh, but I just wanted to do it with like a different team that he does because I know he does a, a bunch of different teams and I just want to do something he hasn't done. So credit to him. You guys check him out. I know pretty sure you guys know who that is. He's a pretty big YouTuber himself. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Come back for episode two of your...